See, with the Motown act and come back, if the bass spot is filled, he end up playing guitar. Because he's part of the family, it's like it's always hard to get rid of him. So did they, when you made a record, did like everybody want to be on the record? Everybody, the they people? sit around and wait for their turn to get a... Nothing about continuity didn't make sense because we, five people would start the song off. And by the time we finished it, it'll be five more people that you've never seen before. <laughs> you know, but we was all part of the family. Yeah. And it just kept growing, kept growing. And you started off like like in the 50s or 50, something? Did the doo -wop band? 56 with five of us wow. singing doo -wop. Wow. Mainly because Frankie Lyman came over here and played the London Palladium. Yeah. And when I saw that, oh, I want to do that. So where did I was you, 14. Where did, where did the funk come from? Where did you discover the funk and start? Kind of well, by like 50, by 60, Motown took over. So it became the doo-wop of the six, early 60s. But by middle way through that, you started getting Cream, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin. You started getting that loud music coming over. So that was brand new to us, you know. We said, oh shit, we got to do something different. So we did, we got some Marshall amps, play Motown real loud. <laughs> Cranked it up, turned it, made it real loud and called it Psych Funkadelic. Everybody else was calling it Psychadelic. We was funky like Motown, but now we play it through Marshalls. And I mean, when we realized that that was the sound that Jimmy was getting, the who was getting, we realized that's what it was. We went and spent all the money we had on amps. We had more amps than we had members of the band. Yeah! You know, it was so loud. Wow. And that was 68 and 69. But by the time 70 came in, you know, you had James Brown and Slide Stone Woo! Was, becoming, was becoming popular. That was becoming the sound. The horns and so Bootsy showed up out of James group. He bought his brother Catfish, played guitar, and Fred Wesley, trombone, and Maceo Parker. So now we got a, a horn section. Not only a horn section, we got the best horn section around. You know, we got the JBs. So you add that to Funkadelic, which was already Motown, Jimi Hendrix. Now we got so much funk in there, we had to change it again, call it P-Funk. Yeah. We got everything. Now we got loud music. James Brown, Bootsy showed us, put it on the one, and it's real strong. Yeah. So now you got all those loud guitars on the one. And right, right after Chocolate City, we did Chocolate City, which, you know, focused on having a black president, yeah, yeah. which I'm came to space. pass, came to pass, then from there we went to outer space. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the pimps on a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going through the galaxy <laughs> plane, you know, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. So with like the, the, like the look and the spaceship and all that stuff, did you come up with all those ideas and say, this is great, or was it well, a collective thing? Well, no, at that time, it, it was basically myself, I'm a, I was a beautician. I used to do people's hair. So I know styles. You know, I know I could pick any, oh, that style is happening right now. So we're going to do this. And when it came time where the styles wasn't the style, it was the hippies, we really know how to look like that because that looked like us normally. You know, when you're poor, you ain't got nothing but some holy thing. So if that's hip, we were down. We were the hippest there was. Matter of fact, we got so funky, we wore, you know, Towers from Holiday Inn made diapers out of them. <laughs> Took the sheet, put a hole in it, put it on my head with nothing under it. <laughs> that was our costume, so funky became easy. It was when we got the mothership that we had to change back into glitter. Yeah. We didn't want to go back into suits, because we had done that as kids. You know, we, we knew how to do that from the barbershop. We had to do something way past that, so we got a spaceship. We got costumes that was forty thousand dollars, you know, to the animal right people. So you can't wear fur like that. So we had to get fake fur after that. Yeah. But we was the coolest with the spaceships, and that became our look with Bootsy, the whole glitter leather. That was the player's look. Oh wow! We call it call it swag now. <laughs> Has anyone got a question at this point? Please throw your questions at us. Anybody? Here we go. 
Funk give you energy. Yeah. <laughs> I think Funk got Viagra in it. <laughs> yes, <God. laughs> Anyone else? Any other questions at this moment? Just throw them in when you want to. I'll write you, Cass. You've got a question. You must have a question. I asked them all at lunch. He asked them all at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay, so um, talking about all this stuff, there's so many things I want to ask you about. One of the really big things that we're really interested in here, um, because we've got a collective of people and students, is collaboration. And you've done collaborations from day one, really, haven't you? And you've got loads of artists you've, you've, you've done stuff with. I just finished, I think, was it down there? I just finished the album right here. Funkadelic, Shake the Gate in the Scud. Kendrick Lamar. And Ice Cube on, on our newest single that will be, be out in a couple of days around here. This is old Funkadelic, just like the old Funkadelic record. You know, the, the writing on it. Three, three CDs, 33 songs. And like I said, you got Sly Stone on it. Ice Cube, Kendrick Lamar, uh, uh, what's it, Louis Vega. You know, so we try to collab with everybody that's happening, especially the ones that's putting you out of business. Those are the ones, those are the ones you really want to collaborate with. The ones you hate the most, they're they going to be the new shit. You can count on it. Whenever you hate them, you hate them into existence. So, so you might as well like the ones that you really don't like. Those are the ones you really want to pay attention to. Because the sillier they sound, the more proof that they're going to be the new one. Because I can remember when we was starting out, it was bop, bop, do mama, the bop, bam, boom. My mother said, what the hell are you talking about? And from then on, I can remember every time I hear that, you know, what the hell are you talking about? Whenever you got that new shit that sound dumb, that's it. Pay attention to it. <laughs> I, I always had a quick look. You've also done like collaboration with the Chili Peppers, Snoop Dogg, Wu Tang Clang as well. People like that, but the Outcast. It's like a massive list of people. How do you do them? Do you actually go to the studio and do them? Do you do them online? Do you do them? In no, most places? of those we done physically. Kendrick came to the studio in Tallahassee. Most of the time I go wherever they at. You know, when they find out they want to uh, do something with me, I pay attention to my as my great granddaughter right there. You know, she used to get on YouTube and tell me, you know, grand dude, that's the one. You know, he's gonna be, he's gonna be that one. So do it with him if he's asking you. And that's what happened. I pay attention to my kids, my kids' kids. I pay attention to them, and they tell me what's up. Keep me up on it, so I know who to flirt with. Is there, is there anybody you're doing a collaboration with at the moment? Well, I just did rudimental. On the, yeah, yeah. The album they got out now, two songs on that, and we did about three a couple of nights ago. Oh, wow. So hopefully it'll be on that new one too. Josh Stone, mm -hmm. Boy George, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, Blind Lotus. Oh, I oh. oh. oh, got the Blind Lotus fans in here. Yeah. But Blind Lotus and um, you know uh, Thundercat, they did the um, you know Kendrick Lamar's album too with us. So, I collab with anybody that I get a chance to. I horn it on anybody's session. Uh, Skunk and Nancy. Oh, did I just say that? Sorry, you know there's a couple of members over there. We'll book you in next door and teach you control. <laughs> These guys, guys are funky. These guys are great, you know, they just pulled that out of the bag last night for you. So, oh, I know, so I'm really... I have to come back over here and do a session. <laughs> Fantastic. So moving on from collaboration then, production, you've produced loads of records as well, haven't you? Yes. You know, when they want to be all the way out there, they have their own thing that they can trust me with doing because I'm pretty strange. You know, like with Chili Peppers, they knew what they wanted. Yeah. They knew they wanted to be funky, but they already had what they wanted to do. And I just kind of like tuck in the ends and let them do what they want to do. Because they're really well known for being big fans of you. Yeah, right? so I mean, I trust them and they trust me. So that one was pretty easy. A lot of times people hear what I'm doing, they be like, I don't know if that's going to work. When it finished, they, oh, that sounds great. But we didn't know you was going there. Yeah. But it's hard. It don't make sense to me either when I start. Because like, I start with nonsensical stuff. I'm trying to make it make sense towards the end. 
But if you, if you turn yourself loose, you'll do stuff that don't make sense. Yeah. But feels good. You can put stuff in there later, especially with hip hop being so big, where you can sample shit and put it in there, and it works. Yeah. Yeah, you can straighten it out easy. I try all kind of ways. Do you do you have like any kind of like method to your madness? No, or that's do you what I'm just, saying. You just look at what's uh -huh. happening and yeah. you go, this, this kind of is, feels right. Funk is its own reward. You know, I say do the best you can and funk it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Once you do the I don't really know what I'm doing, but I trust my instincts. Yeah. And I know a lot enough people that do know what they're doing that I know how to pick the right people to do it. Yeah. You know, I can tell when somebody got a thing, and I, I figure out my part. Once I get their part, then I have to figure out what my part is to that. You know, without changing what they're doing, if they doing what they do, I trust. Them. <laughs> 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 